Hey. 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 It's my kitty. I didn't. I should have. No one told me. It's my kitty here to help host episode 53. Wow. Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel analyze lyrics. Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Um, do you, does it make you mad or insane as, like it does? Well, I'll just say it this way. It makes me super mad <laughs> when you go to somebody's house and they talk to you with their pet. They like aim their pet at you and talk in its voice. Yes. Yeah. That's it, its voice, you know, like a, like a, a drunk baby. Yeah. <laughs> Alex is staying for dinner. Aren't you, Alex? You're staying for dinner. It's like, am I talking? Do I talk to you? It's when it's like and when you run into a ventriloquist, they do the same thing. Yep. Here's a funny thing that's happened in my household along those lines. So Tinkerbell, all right, you're getting down, sweetie. Tinkerbell, our little uh, chihuahua, she talks. Uh-huh. Because- she, is, she was our first dog that we got. Uh, we've always had cats. And Tinkerbell's the first dog we ever had. And, oh, I love her very much. She's a very sweet girl. And so from the very beginning, we do baby talk and nonsense like that. Sure, as you should. Yeah. And, uh, and then Buddy, when we got Buddy, a uh, really lovely terrier, this guy who is no longer with us, uh beautiful boy love him very much he he talked a lot too <laughs> <laughs> and uh my and all of which is fine and we don't do it to strangers because you're right that's not you know you know spare other people your insanity sure um then we got walter now walter is also a terrier and walter is a little bit of a special needs guy he's got a couple birth defects and he has a dog version of autism which to the best of what I can gather now that I know Walter better means, oh, the problem with got, uh, dog autism is they're smarter and it's frustrating. Wow. That's got to be it because I've come to realize that he's just wicked smart. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he just is like, oh, no, why? I don't have thumbs. Yeah. So many, so many ideas. Well, and I think he's smart enough to go, to have ideas he wants to communicate to us, and then he's mad that we don't get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've sensed that from animals sometimes. Yeah. Where they're like, bark, bark, bark. Yep. Idiot. <laughs> so uh, early on, I was like, do you want to go for a car ride, Walter, or whatever? And Mary Jo just set her foot down, and she goes, hey, just so you know, Walter doesn't talk. <laughs> and every, now and then she'll screw up. She'll screw up, and I'll say something. How you doing, Walter? And she goes, "Oh, pretty good." I go, "That was Walter talking." And she goes, "No, it was actually Tinkerbell making fun of us." <laughs> but she's doing it for a very good reason because we realized with this particular dog, we uh-huh. really have to listen to him. Because, because he's got needs, so you got to figure out what it is that's going on to address what he's, he's communicating with more like shades of nuance. Yeah, and if we and if we talk for him, then we make these you know, <laughs> anthropomorphized decisions for him that aren't good that lead to him going crazy. Wow! So we've become better dog owners because of him. <laughs> He's helping you communicate better. Yeah, we, well, and he's helping us go, oh, maybe it's okay if he's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I feel like most of my communication with uh, Lottie, who's uh, now a 20-year-old cat, yeah, is me just going, what? Because <laughs> she has no, <laughs> there's no, it's the same meow, the very aggressive and demanding meow. Yeah. Um, for everything. <laughs> She's like a, a human who knows one word. Hey, does she ever chitter when she sees birds in the window? Have you had that? Oh, yes. I yeah, love- a little jaw thing. It's like, oh, I'm going to eat you. Um, it's been a while. We used to have a bird feeder attached 
to the outside of the window and she would stalk her way up there and a couple of times just like slammed her full body against the window <laughs> which is great because then it scares the bird and the bird feeder falls off the window or like one of the hooks falls off and their seed goes everywhere it's a whole <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an action movie that's then, great what have you done but we can't do that here because we're on we're too high up and if the bird feeder falls off it might kill a child yeah which would be funny sure but yeah in the moment but how do you explain afterwards once yeah. the joke's over to the parents and be like well yeah had, <laughs> had to be there you had to be there at the top part before it hit when your child died yeah you, you, you missed it <laughs> It's the funny part, and now it's just sad for years. Last episode, I want to say this. Last episode, okay. keeping the faith. Yeah. We missed a trick, and I we have to cover this now. Oh, okay. Hit me. The video for that MFR is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. The whole opening courtroom scene. Yeah, so he's on trial. <laughs> uh, and Lord, there's it's oh, there's so much glorious. First of all, it's Billy, it's the height of ah, I'm not sure I want to do videos, Billy Joel. He's so uncomfortable. Yeah. He, he would rather I think if he would just he'd be one of those guys who'd like just do concert footage. Yeah. If you let him, and they just tried to make him <laughs> act. Yeah, and dance. And dance. Why? And he does some Michael Jackson-esque moves, but not good. Right. They look like... Unsurprisingly. Yeah, they look like if Michael Jackson was choreographing a video and he had a guy in a specialist <laughs> you know he's like somebody else was teaching michael jackson the moves this looks like if you filmed the first time he saw the moves <laughs> right yeah very first time and he was doing them slow and deliberate to go like this it doesn't even look like the second time. It's the first do it Right. One quarter speed just to get the, <laughs> the blocking down. And the dance is the worst dance for this song, too, just as far as. But there's a really funny part where he goes, take a fresh pack of Lucky's and a mint, call Sim Sim. And all these girls in pretty um, 50s outfits take out a packet of cigarettes and one of them, who has to have been an extra who did this because she didn't know what else to do, goes. <laughs> like, she's like, cigarettes, great, right? Isn't this great? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to look through that again. Oh, uh, but the very best part, because you couldn't explain this to an, a young person and have it make any sense. At the very end, well... Spoiler alert, he's found innocent. It turns out he's an innocent man. <laughs> what was the charge? The charge was, has he been keeping the faith, more or less? Right. And yeah. during the course of the trial, by the way, at the beginning of the trial, a person's reading a newspaper, Billy Joel on trial, is he keeping the faith? At the end, Billy Joel, an innocent man, visible wow. for trial... The same newspaper? It's So what I think is they it must be a town where they have a morning and an afternoon edition. So you would think it'd be a big city. Yeah, and the trial must have been at 1130. <laughs> <laughs> that happened so quickly. The evening edition came out during the dancing. It had to have been, yeah. And the guy ran out in the lobby and got a copy. Yep. Now, this particular judge, I will say, should be disbarred because when everybody dances out of the court, he also dances out of the court. Oh, yeah. You can't do that. There were other cases that day. Probably. Yeah. I believe uh, he had the, a, a double homicide trial right after. 
right. <laughs> so I've, and you I've, think that would have been the headline in the newspaper. Yeah. If I'm remembering the docket correctly, if I'm remembering, and you're right, that should have been the headline. This thing. Yeah. I'm surprised the DA even brought that case. Yeah. The faith keeping case. Right. Yeah. I don't, I didn't see the title of the newspaper. I'm imagining it was the daily rock and roll or something. <laughs> or something lazier than that, maybe. Yeah. But here's the thing you could never explain to a young person in a million years and have it make sense. At the very end, he, uh, we see that there's a guy getting his shoe shined. We don't know who the guy is. Oh, yeah. Joel has already left. Right. The guy tips the shoe shine boy a uh, hundred bucks. Pretty good. Pretty good. And <laughs> who the guy is, and the guy is Joe Piscopo. Wow. And he goes, keep the faith, kid. And first, good luck explaining Joe Piscopo to anybody. You got to remember, he was a huge star for uh, six months. Yeah, for six months tops. But you also now, first, you got to go, Joe Piscopo, why? Why? Okay, so first, you got to get the kid to understand Joe Piscopo. Right. And then you have to explain Frank Sinatra to the kid. Oh, boy. And you have to go. And that's supposed to be an impression of Frank Sinatra, I guess. That's sort of what he was known for at the time, but he didn't like dress up like him or anything in the video. In the video, he's dressed as, as, I, as far as I can tell, he's dressed as Joe Piscopo. <laughs> and he's not, he didn't even go, keep the faith, kid, and try to do a Sinatra. But yeah. I was just trying. I know that wasn't great, but I'm. <laughs> yeah, but at least we could tell you were doing something. Yeah, and at least and I'm letting point. you know. Hey, look, I'm no Joe Piscopo, but oh my lord, the whole thing was like. So, this is a video about his love of the fifties, right? That was supposed to be Frank Sinatra which first of all, doesn't make any sense in this love of 50s rock and roll video. No, that could have been one of the things he listed in the song, but he didn't. Yeah. Um, it's also, he's representing himself, I guess, at this trial. Yeah, he because is. He approached the bench. That's right. Uh, so, not his attorney. So he has a fool for a client. <laughs> uh, you beat me. Oh, where you go there, Sue? Oh, I was going there. Oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, and then there's this young lady who, you know, an extra, you know, who there's that is supposed to just she's swooning over Billy Joel. And I know some women did, but there's no way this woman did. No. The other thing you'd have to explain to a young person is. This was a, a, a contemporary rock and roll song. Yeah. 1983? Yeah. It was like, where this going to be on the charts? Can you imagine anything that sounded like that yeah. coming anywhere near the charts? You would, if a kid heard that now, he'd be like, is that from like Music Man or something? <laughs> is this to like a Broadway musical? Yeah. Is it a really long jingle or a? The opening of a TV show or something? <laughs> really? No. This was a rock song. And back then, kids, a lot of rock singers had kind of fat faces. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not, for real, I got no problem with it. I'm, I don't think I'm intentionally being mean. It's just kind of funny. It just all sticks out at me. I'm like, this is a guy not young anymore, not old. You know, this nope. you know, maybe late 30s i'm guessing yeah that's right and uh and like we said we like the song it was a good song oh yeah great but just not just a lot of context problems with it 
Yeah. And Joe effing Piscopo. God. Bringing it home. You could you could you can't explain Joe Piscopo to me, and I liked him. And the song's over at that point, right? The music is over. It's done. And it's like a little scene. Yep. Where <laughs> Joe Piscopo in it. And why he's not trying to do a Sinatra impression, I don't know. Because it doesn't, because first of all, I think even at the height of his fame, Joe Piscopo isn't giving anybody a hundred dollar tip. No. That's maybe not. at the very height. But yeah. it shouldn't. No. Maybe he thought it was gonna last longer. Yeah. Is are you doing that with your Johnny Dangerously money? I don't know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is he in that? Yeah, he is. And he's oh hilarious God. in it too, by the way. That's a that again. That was great. That's that a great. That's a gem where you can watch that again and go, I don't know how they did this, but this is actually good. It's actually good. It's an ad vibe. Yep. Who's the star? Uh, the great Michael Keaton. That's right. Before he becomes a serious actor, before the Batman, before all of that, this is like probably right after Night Shift. Yeah, it had to be. And it's a lovely movie. And I, yeah, it does stand up pretty good. <laughs> you know, a joke, you know, just to like my dad hit me once, once. It was a great, it's all great. It's all great. Uh, and who was the bad guy? It's Joe Piscopo. He's the bad guy. Bad guy who couldn't pronounce anything. Oh, was there another bad guy? Because it's been a minute since so. I'm calling him a farging ice hole. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you farging ice hole. That's right. <laughs> You summon them, summon them, bitch. I think he called him. Yeah, that's right. It's it's funny how that works, even though nobody's being very accurately Italian. And the Steve Martin movie where he's Italian does not work. No, I would not wish it did because I love Steve Martin, but it just doesn't. <laughs> oh, do you remember the name of that movie? I don't remember that movie. I Blue Heaven. Oh no, so, sort of a serious movie, right? Yeah. Uh, see the title alone. Yeah, I'm out. Anyway, we're nowhere near the topic of our show, <laughs> but <laughs> well, kind of. We talked about Billy Joel. I just had to get it off my chest that video. Oh, thank you. Because I feel like we left money on the table not talking about that. Um, I have. When I hear that song, I always also hear his little speech to the judge before the song starts. Yeah. Like, Your Honor, with the court's permission, I'd like to try a little different approach. That's right. And then the court doesn't give him permission, and he does it anyway. It's a yeah. mess. Yep. And you know, a lot of there's this a trial. There was a lot wrong with that trial because it occurs to me that he mounted a defense, but I don't think the prosecution ever presented anything. I think you're right. Which should have been like a them singing a different song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about how he's not keeping the faith. Yeah, like they like the other day we saw him listening to some crap on the radio or something. <laughs> yeah, we saw him having a current day mint. <laughs> <laughs> Quit smoking a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Piscopo. So the song I picked for this week in episode 53 is <laughs> It Goes. And so it goes. What a pretty song. Lovely song. The video for this one is a concert performance. Weird. This and is one I feel like where you'd have some room to not do that. And I can't figure out. Not a rocker. No. I can't figure out if it's a real concert or not. Oh, I didn't watch the video. Whether or not I should make fun of it or not. Because it's there's nothing wrong with the video, but it feels... So there's a lot of hands in the air. Uh-huh. And it's the kind of artistically lit where you see beams of light shooting through smoke. You know, that, that thing. Sure, sure. And it... It doesn't feel very, it doesn't feel organic to me. And if that's what they did, I don't like it. 
You don't like uh, the fake concert? No. no, I don't. But I don't know. It could have been real, I guess. I, yes. I haven't, I have to watch it again, but I, my memory of it is that, that it was fake. I think it was, and I don't like that. I've never liked that. Like, you remember Bruce Springsteen, you know, um, when Courtney Cox gets to dance with him? Oh, yeah. Fake. Yeah, that's only charming because now we know that that was Courtney Cox. And we also know that that's something that Bruce Springsteen and Billy Joel have in common, which is they would rather not be made to dance. <laughs> for very, very obvious reasons. Yeah, gangly, just dudes. Just uh, dads, they, they're they like dad dancers. Yeah, um, but the song's very pretty. And so I'm a little, I guess I'm a little forgiving of the video in that it's not, it's not over the top. It's just the hands bother me because I'm like, I don't think anybody did that. But maybe they do in real life at concerts. So maybe you were recreating something that happens. I don't know that I've ever heard him play this song in concert. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's definitely now people hold up like a cell phone flashlight. Yeah. You notice that nobody has lighters, of course. Right. Because we're all behaving. Um, but it's so I feel like just let the tradition go. Yeah, I would Either agree. hold up your cell phone flashlight. Yeah, I, I agree with that. At a Billy Joel concert, I feel like 60% of people have their iPhone flashlight on by accident. <laughs> <laughs> You're just inviting more people to turn them on and forget to turn them off. Yeah, that's, yeah, you know, a bunch of old, yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, Lord. Did I tell you about the time I had mine on? I was standing on the train on the subway um texting away or something and the flashlight was on but some kid came up to me and he's like excuse me sir uh, your flashlight's on and i felt so very old <laughs> uh, and i tweeted about it later i was like oh hey some nice kid told me to turn off my flashlight and uh on twitter somebody responded uh i think that was me <laughs> great some kid and his profile was all about uh, all these projects he has where he helps old people. <laughs> He's involved in all these groups that help old people uh, get their shit together. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Well, I'm going to dig a hole now. <laughs> My friend Vance, who's a bit older than us, uh, by a, a, a chunk. He's in his 70s, I think. And uh, I, I told you about him. I changed a joke because I didn't realize how close he was to the joke about he should die. Yeah. But um, what regularly happens to him is he he runs an open mic and he will time people, you know, to let him know that your five minutes is up, time for you to get off stage. So he runs an open mic. And what regularly happens is the following week he'll take out his phone and realize that the, whoever the last comic is, he hadn't given them the light, and they've been timed for about 90 hours. Oh, no, no, no. Just keep going and going and going. Nightmare. I, he's <laughs> got to constantly be thinking, I don't know what's wrong with my phone. The battery's constantly dying. Yes, because everything's on, old man. Everything's on. Lord. Uh, one thing I will say for for goodness sakes, it's always something I like to mention. This song has a proper ending. Yes. It doesn't have a weird bridge either. It doesn't really. It's sort of, I was reading about it, and it is based on, according to Wikipedia, an old Scottish ballad. Oh. It does not sound like that Scottish ballad, which uh, we listened to earlier. But I feel like that the bridge was not invented yet. Okay. <laughs> a lot of those old old ballads just sort of keep going. Yeah. Yeah, like Danny Boy and all. Oh, okay. There's no middle where that like rocks out for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. It shouldn't. So that's good. <laughs> 
close. So it's one of those things where that was the piece of music that inspired it. Yeah. Oh, do you happen to know the name? I'll link to it. It's a song called Barbara Allen. Um, and apparently it gets very frequently covered by like bluegrass folk. Yeah. And knowing me, you're probably going to see a clip of Barbara Ann, and I won't realize it. <laughs> Jim, will you please get it right the first time? I will try to get it right. <laughs> uh, right. My friend Brian, real quick about Barbara Ann, he said, you remember hearing about the song and thought, oh, they probably worked on making it sound like they were just doing this in the studio. And then you listen to it, he's like, no, that's what they did. They're just high. Yeah. Brian is a hot mess that's somehow enjoyable, but it's <laughs> a big fat mess of high surfer dudes. Totally. Yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. And did you know that song existed before it's a cover? I didn't know that. Wait, what? It's a cover? Our I button. didn't know that. Yeah. No. But it's funny how they were like, well, let's cover it, but barely do it. <laughs> right. Well, it's not our song. Who gives a shit? I'll play the ashtray. <laughs> right. There's somebody playing an ashtray at some point. I bet they recorded it, not meaning to put it on the album, and they were like, we didn't finish. And he goes, yeah, we did. Here, Barbara Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the beach. <laughs> Bye. And so it goes. It's a very pretty song. And so it goes, uh, which is, uh, we talked about this last week. Um Sue and I did, not you and me, <laughs> about the fact that So It Goes is a refrain that happens in uh, Slaughterhouse-Five. Oh. So, uh, so It Goes was the refrain from Slaughterhouse-Five, right? Yes. Yeah. Kurt yep. Vonnegut, in many of his novels, will have some like short refrain that um, he'll put like in italics at the end of chapters or between important thoughts. And so Slaughterhouse Five has uh, "So It Goes." There's no "and," oh. but it's sort of his way of expressing helplessness, which I think is also what this song does. That's great. Not necessarily helplessness isn't great, but that's great. <laughs> no, helplessness not great. Not always. No, it's great how often we're like that. No, that's not great either. No. <laughs> <laughs> In every heart there is a room, a sanctuary safe and strong, to heal the wounds from lovers past until a new one comes along. That's a wonderful lyric. Yeah. I like how it is very, it's like almost pentameter. Yeah. Um, it, there's not a lot of fucking around. And this is also lyrically um, heightened language for him. Yeah, it's very clean. You're right. It's very clean. It's not a lot of the usual nonsense. <laughs> yeah, there's no, uh, there's no ain'ts. <laughs> so any. And it's sad, you know, a sanctuary safe and strong is more what you hope your heart is. Right. And, and it's a mistake anyway, because you're a good, strong, guarded heart is definitely the road to happiness. <laughs> <laughs> it's a road to, to a, a white nationalist podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We should, say, we should say this is not. No. But we should say that this is from Stormfront. <laughs> <laughs> we should say that. Oh. He means it nautically. Yeah, he means it nautically. And this was way before, you know, guys who sold pillows were on shows. <laughs> that dude. What a, what a nice lyric, though. What a sad lyric to heal the wounds from lovers past until a new one comes along. There's just, it's all melancholy because you're not even really hopeful about the new one in this lyric. No, I mean, to just give her a name like the new one. Yeah. Don't get attached. Yeah. <laughs> you're hopeful that maybe you can have new experiences, but you're not optimistic about outcomes. That's for sure. Yes. 
Yes, well said. That's pretty great. Uh, outcomes not great. New experiences possibly coming. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Um, all right, I'll go. All right. I spoke to you in cautious tones. You answered me with no pretense. And still I feel I said too much. My silence is my best defense. Yeah, I think if he handed this to you and was like, hey, I wrote these lyrics, um, you would be like, this doesn't sound like you. Yep. This sounds like a uh, fancy boy. Now, I just want to say, I am on billyjoel.com. Where are you? I am on Google. Because in, on billyjoel.com, it says, my silence is my self-defense. Oh. Oh, wait. What did I say? Best? Yes. It is. Oh, yes. My okay. silence is my self-defense. Oh, okay. Phew. That, that might be Google. Somebody just wrote him down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to you. Uh, ooh. Somebody just texted me. I think it's a wrong number. Oh, nice. Um, you answered me with no pretense, and still I feel I said too much. Yeah, this is so sad because he saw, said a little bit. And he was like, oh. Like he, like he said, I'm hungry. And he was like, I told, I've said too much. <laughs> Damn it. I blew it. Um, this is not the Joel we have known who uh, tells you how to do things and how, how you should live your life and how to talk to girls, especially. Yeah. It's like, uh, I've said too much. The best thing I can do is not talk. Yeah. <laughs> do you think... This feels like, do you think this was written in the aftermath of one of his relationships failing in that moment when you're like, eh, okay, I guess that happened? Yes. Well, I in my Googling, I did uh, learn that it was written about a failed relationship yeah. with Elle McPherson. Oh. Which I guess would bum you out. Yeah. Although at some point, I bet you he gets old enough to go. I hope he's old enough to realize how ridiculous it is that he got to date O McPherson to begin with. And yeah, you did fine, my friend. You did good. I'll bet that is a large part of why he just stopped writing pop music. You know? Yeah. It's just like, I, these feelings are all kind of dumb. <laughs> I'm doing great. Yeah. Don't really have any complaints. I don't have any new information for you. Yeah. Don't have any new analysis. Yeah. It's like um, we're good. You know, I the month. Yeah, I've said this about Mel Brooks. The reason that the only funny things that Mel Brooks did for a long time were revisiting old funny things, not like a lot of new funny things. Just like, hey, we made a musical of a funny thing I did before, is because. The time when he was making the best stuff was when he was mad and felt kind of like an outsider and all that stuff. Yeah. And you marry the woman of your dreams and you got all this money and you're like, I was less, I'm not as mad anymore. Yeah. And I get inspired. Yeah. So here's the music. My doctor says I shouldn't get mad. Right. Yep. So I'm not even stay out of it. <laughs> But the, yeah, this is a bummer of a song in a very lovely way. Spoke to you in Kosh. Wow. And my silence is my self-defense. And every time I've held a rose, it seems I only get the thorns. And so it goes, and so it goes, and so will you soon, I suppose. Well, that's some self-fulfilling prophecy, because if this is how you are all the time. <laughs> Yeah, true. Nobody wants to hang out with you. Yeah. Um, I've been, this, I'm this guy a lot. Yeah. I'm like, well, every time I get a rose, I get poked with a thorn. Yeah. And people are eventually are like, okay, well, I'll see you at work. <laughs> we don't have to hang out on weekends. Yeah. And so all you're going to do is bitch about the prices at the sushi place. <laughs> 
we enjoy the sushi. I'm like, well, mine was not great. I'm like, yeah, okay. We're gonna go. Yeah, that was fun. I'm glad we decided to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. So when you keep telling, especially in a relationship, you keep telling a woman, like, you're going to leave me, then uh, she will. And then you get to be right for a second, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what is the con there? What are you hoping that she's like, I'll teach you, I'll hang around, because then that's not good either. Yeah, you're trying not to get caught off guard. Yeah. You're like, ah. Oh. Because you know, my heart will be broken if she suddenly leaves, and I have no idea why. Yes. So uh, I'll cause it. I know what I'll do. <laughs> I'll cause it. Oh yeah, that's pretty great. That's We've been there. Well, yeah. Well, like of course she left. Yeah, because you kept bringing it up. Wow. Yeah, I don't like. By the way, the only thing is because I like the lyrics so much up till now, and I'm like, oh, oh well, the the rose part I don't like. It's a little hack. Yeah. Roses and thorns. But I do like, so will you, I suppose. I like the, I suppose. I like that part. <laughs> it's real mopey. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, you know, he could maybe have saved it with a, and so will you soon, I guarantee. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Uh, yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> You can take it to the bank. You ain't staying. Prove me wrong. <laughs> uh, the only thing that works less. <laughs> uh, All right. and, and then now he's double clutching. Yeah. But if my silence made you leave, then that would be my worst mistake. So I will share this room with you and you can have this heart to break. Um, is that the same room from the beginning? Yeah, it's the same room. A little room in his heart. Yeah. And I think in this case, he's decided, in this case, he's decided I'm going to open up to you, but not really because I'm like, so yeah, come on in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in. And then you can just fuck me up. <laughs> right. I'm not letting you in for any, uh, not in a part of an attempt to uh, have a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, this is more like, it, it almost is this, I'm resigned to the fact that I have feelings for you now. I'm still not loving the fact that I have feelings for you. Right. But I am. 100% out of here. Yeah. Oh, Elle McPherson, that's funny. Good for you, Billy Joel. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Wow. Um, maybe that's why he doesn't do this song anymore. Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe he kicked the crap out of him emotionally. I don't know. I mean, he seems to have bounced back. Yeah. Later, 10 times. <laughs> uh, oh, and this is why my eyes are closed. It's just as well for all I've seen. And so it goes, and so it goes, and you're the only one who knows. Hmm. So then I would I would feel like what that's saying is you're the first person I've let know how much I, I kind of hurt. Um but yeah. it was real guilt trippy because you keep saying you're going to hurt me. But just so you know, I've been really hurting. But <laughs> but there's at least maybe a sense that the the character in this case himself, I, which is probably why the music so song is less adorned. By the way, probably yeah. the other reasons there's less other things as far as like production is because it's just stuff he feels. Even the lyrics are pretty cut and dried. Um, they're very pretty, but the, yeah, I guess the idea is I told you stuff, so you know, you know I'm hurting. Right. So if you so if you leave now, man, what kind of a jerk are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's really put 
somebody in a in no win position here. Doesn't she saying, why would you stay? Yeah. Probably doesn't get any more fun than this. <laughs> um, but yeah, you I don't think it's your silence or your talking. Yeah. It feels like an attitude. It's your attitude, young man. One second. That's what I mean. Oh, good. Did you get it? Nice. <laughs> uh, just so everyone knows, a moth. What do you get? What'd you have? A moth. Yep. Yep. And the worst. And so it goes. And so it goes. So. Uh, yeah, they're, they're. Yeah, that's funny. I was like, you're the only one who knows. That's a lot to put on somebody, too. Just now that I think about it, because you all went all and like everybody has this room. You don't let nobody in this room. This is where you heal. When you get ready for the next person, but I'm gonna let you in this room, and you're still gonna be a jerk to me. I know it. What is she supposedly the only one who knows that I, he is capable of suffering? Yeah, like that. There's a real not jaded person in there, right? There's somebody with these very, very deep, deep feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like that ain't true. Yeah. Um, certainly, if, if he's an adult, <laughs> nobody's learning anything about you for the first time if you're over 30. Yeah. You no, know, you've shown other people who you are, even if you don't think you have. Yeah. Um, maybe you're finally aware of like this little room in your heart or whatever you're singing about. Yeah. But, um, you know, how many times have you been talking to an ex-girlfriend and you're like, hey, wasn't it, you didn't know, but I felt this way. And they go, yeah, no, I knew. I was waiting for you to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the well, other- could, How'd you know? The other thing it could be because I know I've had this where you where there's a a, a period of a lull in my emotional connectivity to just most things. There's a period of time where I'm more or less disconnected. Sure. And then there's a there will come a time when I'm I suddenly reconnect and don't know why. Right. And it could be that feeling because that weird feeling of like, oh, wait a minute, I am a person. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh, I just had to take a break. Yeah. For a little bit. I had to go on autopilot for a little while. Yeah. And by a little while, I mean 30s, the 30s, <laughs> the, third, the, the 1930s. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, don't, remember, I don't remember anything. <laughs> so I would choose to be with you. That's if the choice were mine to make. Uh, yeah. But you can make decisions too. And you can have this heart to break. It's so cowardly is what that is. <laughs> it's darn cowardly. No. Um, also, it's very clinical. Yeah. Like I would, I would choose this. If it was my choice, you are also capable of choices. Yeah. It's not, if you were a, uh, like a used car salesman and this was your pitch, yeah, you, you're not going to make a living. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look, if it were up to me, you would buy this car, but you can also make decisions about car buying. So I guess I'm fucked. Yeah. I'm not, I think this is a good car, fun. but there's better cars out there. Do you want it? No. Okay. No, I've been wrong about cars before. And uh, yeah. you have agency. You have all the power in this relationship. So much. Yeah. And they're just a little bit of cowardice there. I can't help but think this is just that emotional cowardice that we all suffer from. Yeah. Or, or like surrender. Yeah. He's maybe been brave or strong long enough and it just hasn't worked. Is that what that feels like? Because, yeah, he, because it feels like you're just putting so much onus on the other person that if this doesn't work out, 
look, I would make this work out. Well, then do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. What are you offering? Do this stuff. Do this. You're you're aware that because clearly the this person and this is just Billy Joel. This ain't a character. He's not dancing in a video to this. No. No Joe Piscopo to save your ass now. <laughs> oh, we're way past Piscopo. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, you know, this is Tim Kasarinsky, maybe. <laughs> It's it's actually very Kazarinsky. Yeah. Uh, I've forgotten name from SNL lore. Funny dude, though. Funny dude. Traits. But no one will ever remember. <laughs> well, one, of, one of the goods. Yeah. Is that an expression? It, it, yes. It's probably a Kazarinsky. You know, when, yeah. when you say something, he would say that's a Kazarinsky. Doesn't even we put it on a card. Yeah. One of the goods. Flip. <laughs> Oh Lord, yeah, that yeah. What was his thing with it? Not he wasn't Sniglets, but he was something. No, but it was a similar thing. It was made up words to mean thing. Yeah. yeah. It was a very popular form of comedy in the 80s. And he also married a monkey. Huh. Remember that? Don't remember that. Was that a movie? The running sketch series of sketches on SNL. I married <laughs> yeah, they had a monkey. And I think probably discovered what every actor discovers when you work with a monkey is it's going to be terrible. Yep. Pay attention to puberty because it's a moment when they become murderous. Yes. Um, W.C. Fields, right? Wasn't he the one who said never work with children or animals? Yep. Yep. And uh, Ross Geller said, I hate that they put a monkey on the show. That's what he said. <laughs> the character said that. Yeah, they should have. But he did. <laughs> at some point, the damn thing just starts humping everything. Yeah. You can't, they're not actors, man. Oh. Do you know why, by the way, and I know this is a digression. Do you know why it's so brutal when they go through puberty and why it's so dangerous? I don't know. Their testosterone level, a male chimps, is like double ours. Oh, boy. Remember when you went through puberty? Vaguely. Pleasant it was. Oh, sure. How it never got pleasant. <laughs> uh, it ended. Yeah, they, the amount of testosterone in a chimp is ridiculous. Good to know. It's one of the reasons that, probably one of the many reasons they never made a good society because they're pre actually pretty smart, they, but they can't cooperate. <laughs> They're not <laughs> teen teen chimps can't cooperate. Nope. They can make tools, but they, they'll never teach another chimp to make it. So another chimp will never improve upon it. Oh, interesting. So yep. they're <laughs> they're treading water as a society. All figure out the same things and then go, well, you figure it out yourself, dick. I had to figure it out. Right. I'm gonna go kill something. Yep. I'm going to go rip off lips and noses. Oh, God. Yep. Oh, the most horrifying story. And then, and what do you say when that happens? You say, well, and so it goes. <laughs> and yeah. you're the only one who knows. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. And you can have this hard to break, and so it goes, and so it goes, and you're the only one who knows. Yeah, that's just dumping so much onto this person. All of which is to say, I still really like the song. It's very, I it's like It's very pretty. Yeah. Um, but there's no conflict. Yeah. Like it's over before the song starts. True. Yeah. All denouement. Yep. Yeah. I'm kidding. Like she, she's decided. He's obviously decided he can't fight for this relationship. Yeah. She's obviously, this is like songs to sing at someone while they're packing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the greatest title for an album. Uh, that'd be a really great video. <laughs> songs to sing at someone while they're packing. God. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you what, if it's, if, if, 
it's a best of if it's i could curate that album i will think of it i could curate that i could put together this and this sure i this isn't maybe even gonna make it there's a lot of, this could you know it's in the running but lord there's a lot of good songs out there <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to hear. Uh, do have side one ready next week? Oh yeah. What, say the title again, so I do it wrong. Songs. <laughs> Songs to sing at someone. Sing at someone. God. Great. Well, packing. Oh, kind of <laughs> sing at somebody. God, that's so great. I do like the idea of singing at someone. Oh, how was the concert? Keep staring at me. I'm really like, impressive. Yeah. Like way more eye contact than you expect. There were other people at the concert. I'm pretty sure he's just looking at me. <laughs> I was uh, took acid once and saw a band and was pretty sure that all the songs were instructions for me. <laughs> Um, and there was a lot of eye contact. I don't think I imagined all of that. I think I was standing under a light or something. Oh, that's great. Um, band was, what was the name of the band? Oh, New Model Army. I don't think I know New Model Army. They are Irish, I think. They all look like drunk pirates. And the lead singer is terrifying. And he was just like giving me instructions on how to uh, conduct the revolution. And you were on acid. Wow, that's funny. Like, this is no good. I can't handle all these. I, I'm like, I should be writing this down. He's going to be mad <laughs> when I do it wrong. Uh, I was I was feeling very, and so it goes <laughs> about it. Wow, that's great. I'm going to let down the lead singer of New Model Army. Wow. Do yourself a favor after this and listen to uh, Here Comes the War. By new model army, <laughs> and you can sense the kind of pressure I was under. Wow, yeah, it's. I think a lot of this makes me think I don't necessarily need to do acid. I wouldn't do it. Quick side story, and I know we usually don't do side stories. Um, on my 50th birthday, for my 50th birthday, my wife put together a whole thing where I played poker. At a nice in a hotel room with a bunch of friends in Palm Springs. Nice. It was really fun. And it was a surprise. I did not know I was going to Palm Springs. The guy who drove said, Well, listen, I'm driving. You're just you're gonna want to pee now. <laughs> All right. You're old. Okay, this is a long ride. Our one of, one of my friend, very good friends, John, was there. And John, uh, I don't know if he's ever done any drugs. And there were a few people who brought edibles. Okay. And, uh, I didn't do the edibles because I've had an experience with them that made me think, oh, I don't necessarily need to do this, but it's fine, whatever. And he, he took the smallest amount, having never had any before. And the <laughs> weekend was hilariously ruined for him as if he dropped acid and went and saw that. <laughs> Fantastic. He, we were all just joking around, and he keeps going, why are they doing this? He goes, what do you mean? Like, everyone's, is, why is it, everyone's talking in code. I don't get it. What, what? <laughs> like, dude, that's just pot. What? Don't, oh, don't oh. you do anything else. Oh, my God. Great. That's so fantastic. Hey, so look, check, check this out behind me. Oh, hey, look, it's, uh, it's Brenda and Eddie. <laughs> Could be. But uh, you recognize that dude, of course. Um, yeah, it looks like Kevin Bacon. No, it's not Kevin Bacon, but I could see that. It's uh, that's is that Sid and Nancy? No, wow. Okay, I guess it does kind of look like that. Is a musician. That is a musician who could be. It's tough from this angle. It could be David Bowie. It is David Bowie. Okay, good. And then that lady, she's uh, in the movie with him. <laughs> But it's one of the movies he's done, obviously. Uh-huh. And it's not the, the Labyrinth movie. Nope, it ain't the Labyrinth movie. It's the one I know. Um, it's, <laughs> the song this references is kind of funny. because I just thought it would be funny to reference this song. because. Uh, but uh, 
it's pretty easy. We we mentioned this song in this episode as well, but it's oh, not no. and so it goes. Interesting. Yeah, I don't remember anything that happened before this moment. Yeah. Well, we did talk about one other song. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I remember it? What else did we talk about? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what this Stormfront? Movie, we mentioned Stormfront. I'll tell you the plot of this movie. Uh-huh. Uh, I think he's a vampire, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh. Hey. Oh, well, that would track. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she's probably wants him. She probably wants him. There's a sexual. Right. right. She wants him to drink her blood. Yeah, so she's feeling kind of, you know, drawn to him. She's feeling a a, a thing. Her. Lust. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> that, that desire from the pit of your stomach. Oh, she has a hunger. Yep. From she's the got a hunger. Yep. Hungry like the wolf. Yep. Yep. And uh, I don't know, she probably wouldn't be there if she didn't have that feeling. She's hungry enough to stay. Well, I, I don't know if she would even be there if she didn't have the hunger. I'm just telling you now. <laughs> Wait, keeping the faith? Yep. <laughs> would not be here now if I never had the hunger. Wow, bud. How stupid is that, right? Good and stupid. Oh, we have the same glass. Oh, I'm, I was about to show you, but I'm drinking out of a different glass. But I have that glass. Oh, okay. That was a good story, right? That's a great story. Are we syndicated yet? Alex and Jim talk about dishes <laughs> that are the same. They're fucking Target bought plastic glassware. Yep. It's a great glass. It is great. Highly recommend to, to Bruno Mars if you're listening. And uh, if, yeah, yeah, Bruno Mars, you are listening. Yeah, <laughs> gotta get this glass. It's not up to you. Hey, have we ever done one where the fan's not on? Hmm, I think the fan's always on. Sound off in the comments. Yeah, <laughs> by the <laughs> way, it's framed it perfect. Let's frame perfect if we were filmmakers like where the where it is in relation to your nice face it's just oh thank you yeah. that's a, that was a generous compliment you tried to slip under the door <laughs> yeah uh hey uh <laughs> so we got his heart broken by l mcpherson yep went and married christy brinkley she had a nickname for him during their marriage do you know what it is uh all him Oh, okay. So Christy Brinkley had a nickname for him. Um, yeah, that's kind of came out of her being uh, dumb. Oh, um, or at least dumb about this. Uh, oh, a uh, uh, drummer man. She thought he put. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. That's better than the real one. When she was introduced to him, she thought his first name was a hyphenated name she thought his name was billy joe so, so she, she called, called him joe <laughs> that was their funny little joke between them that's pretty great um wouldn't it thought he looked more like a joe than a billy <laughs> which ain't wrong. wrong about that yeah you know what would be great if you found out later their marriage was fantastic. They had a great marriage. I'll bet they did. But this is the breaking point. He, at some point, and they've been married a long time. They're perfectly happy. And then he just goes, hey, I love you. I just want you to know my name's not Billy Joe. <laughs> and what do, you, what do you mean? It's my name is Billy Joel. Billy Joel, you've been letting me call you Joe this whole time. I didn't want to make you look stupid. 
in front, but instead you just let other people think I'm stupid. Now that you say it that way, that's a, that is what happened. I think they just think it's cute. Yeah. I, I don't like to feel stupid. That's it. <laughs> Uh, and so will you soon, I suppose. Because you think my name is Billy Jack, and I haven't told you yet either, Elle. I'm not in that movie. I wish I was. And there's a part of me, a room in my heart where I am, you know? <laughs> oh, the Billy Jack suite. <laughs> the Billy Jack suite, that's pretty good. That's sweet. Another good album title. Oh man, I got a rope. I'm well, got to not forget this. Songs to sing at someone while they're packing. Wow. This text was not a wrong number. I just realized what's happening. Okay. So tell me the song for next week so we can wrap this up. Next week, um, I was thinking about the heightened language of this song, and it reminded me of the heightened language in a very much older song, Somewhere Along the Line. Nice. Okay. Equally corny romantic imagery. We will absolutely talk about that, and that'll be episode 54. Wow, bud. A lot of episodes. <laughs> no two are alike that's true um all kinds of stories that have nothing to do with anything <laughs> <laughs> someone should compile a timeline <laughs> oh all right well i'm going to stop this because uh, i think alex has something he has to take care of and also because it's already been about an hour and a half you, you're happy bruno mars right that's enough isn't yeah, it come on bruno you're going to burn us out. <laughs>